Crazy D jump. I mean, Crazy D is like the co-host of every time I'm ever on the show. You all hear? You all hear D? Can you hear me? I hear you and I see you. Crazy and, D. And, and and you can tell Crazy D, and he's like a professional. He only wanted to show up on here with a green screen. <laughs> and I and I know on the other side of the camera, he probably got like that. Like I said, where he got that ring light, he probably got like a boom mic with the little fuzzy stuff on it. He got like some digital computer stuff. Like if he want to really flex, he could probably hit a button and like the Taj Mahal would be behind him or something like that. I was gonna uh, send you a uh, a cash app so you can send me some uh, a few duggets, chill. Okay, yeah, you need hey, as many times you be okay, but you ain't you ain't because you know I'll be on here talking about the cash app. End of the day, I look and somebody that donated like uh, three dollars, but you know we 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 got love for everybody. <laughs> we got love for everybody, but I'm gonna keep providing information, bringing you to people, and if you want to put something in there, drop something in the cash app, you you can, but you know we go keep we go keep doing this. Support. But, Excellence. That's right. But D, I, I, and I announced the other day that I will be on your show. Uh, I actually have the date. Seventh. June seventh. Seventh. That's right. June seventh. You know, I'm not used to getting interviewed. I do the interviewing. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna give a great. It's it's just gonna be great. It's gonna be a great interview. We're on the film review, movies, music, culture, politics, society, podcast, every Sunday. But on June 7th, it's the first big MC from CLE, Kevin MC Chill Heard. It's going to be on. We're going to talk about everything. It's going to be extensive. Gonna- okay, how can people find out where, where, to, where to see this? How does it, how does it go down? And and you and you pro- you've already put some stuff in the in the uh, in the chat link so they they can see it. But but just tell us about it. Tell us about your show. And again, you're in you're in Vegas. Yeah, uh, broadcasting streaming live from Las Vegas, Nevada, to Cleveland, to New York, to L.A., to in between Florida, everywhere, global. And uh, the Film Review Life channel on YouTube. The Film Review Life channel on YouTube. Subscribe. Subscribe now. June 7th, we have MC Chill on. We're going to go from the beginning. We're going to go from when he was born. He's going to remember <laughs> all the way up till today. Now, Dion Crazy D in Vegas as as he has been prone to do, you can't have journal, other journalists up in the building uh, without without them doing their journalism thing. So I'm not going to ask his question for him since he actually is in the building. But he he had a question for you. So go ahead, go ahead, D, un, unmute and and you can ask it yourself, okay? Uh, Black Panther, how you doing? First of all, oh peace, brother. I'm doing well. Okay, my question. I'll I'll uh, read it the way I wrote it. Uh, does do you find that American blacks in Africa know more about the history of cultures before 1917 than the Africans in the various 54 countries? Or are some Africans more informed on their culture than others? Uh, before I ask this question, I want to I want to get one quick clarification. Are you pointing to a specific uh, event in history, or are you just pointing to that time period? Well, uh, we have uh, uh, in particular we have a lot of uh, Nigerian immigrants here in Las Vegas, and I was speaking to uh, one in particular, and he was saying that he he referenced 1917 as their time. So I was like, well. A lot of people who practice Pan-Africanism here in the United States who are American Black may know more information about previous historic civilizations than the Africans who reference 1917 as their starting point when the, when the, whatever government took over from Europe. But that's why I asked that question. Point. Okay. Uh, and, I, and I believe he's... Uh... He's pointing to the time period of the uh, British um, 
coming in and establishing uh, their control and rule and the events after. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of people do reference that date in, refer- in reference to Nigeria uh, mm-hmm. because of the uh, the Royal Dutch Company and other people, uh, which is known as Unilever today. So I, I'm, I'm aware of that date, but it's kind of hard to blanket so many people in Nigeria um, because you'll meet people of so many different walks of life. You have people just like that brother that, you know, will quote that date, but then you have other people that are aware of the uh, history, depending on what tribe they come from, if they're Igbo or if they're Yoruba, if they're Ishan, uh, you know, they could be a multitude of different things. If they're Edo, you know, um, particular people, particularly people that are Yoruba from Ile Ife have a strong sense of history. Uh, because their history is embedded in every fabric of their society. They have huge statues dedicated to their heroes, uh, uh, the Queen Morimi, uh, Oduduwa, Obatala. They have all of these big statues. And even their universities are named after some of these deities in history. Uh, so coming from a European perspective, they have a deep uh, purpose and a deep sense of history. Uh, Igbo people have a deep sense of history, uh, but particularly some of the younger generation is where you'll find what I think you're talking about, where people may not be aware of some of the things that occurred in their past. As unfortunate as that is, um, this is why my scholarship group exists, not just for African-Americans, but for Africans on the continent. When I was in Senegal, I met a young brother. We were on uh, a lake, which is called Lake La Rose or Lake Reba, which is called the Pink Lake because of its high salt content that turns the water pink. We were on the lake and he pointed at a white gentleman and he said, look at the two bob. Two bob is their word in Wolof for white man. I said, yeah, uh, does that mean white man? He said, yes. And it was a silence for about maybe 15 seconds. And then he says, how is the two bob in America? <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, uh, you, you don't know, <laughs> you know? And, uh, he said, no, uh, I've heard rumors, but I I don't know for sure. So I asked the brother how much time he had because uh, <laughs> we would have to we have a lot to talk about, brother. <laughs> uh, and that's not the first time I've heard of a, a Native African being unaware of some of the events in history um, pertaining with Europeans and uh, Africans or African Americans. It's not the first time I've heard that. So some of our people are ignorant to the historical facts, unfortunately. Uh, some of them aren't. Some of them are very astute and, and even write books about the current dealings with Europeans and they cite historical narratives. So it, it all depends on which African you meet, really. Uh, but unfortunately, that narrative does exist, brother. Hmm. So you actually... Uh, just like what I suspected, you're more t- you're teaching Africans about something that they should know about themselves, and you come from a whole different continent, teaching them about themselves. Uh, essentially, in some in some instances, yes, uh, because our history is so long, so deep, so vast, but it's fragmented at different points. So unless you do the meticulous research using a variety of uh, tools, you know, uh, paleontology, linguistics, uh, different scientific methods, unless you do this work, you can be from somewhere and not realize something about your people. For example, I had a Nigerian tell me uh, that they never met an Igbo that Igbo and Yoruba people didn't interact until a recent time period. And that's totally false. Uh, I keep telling people there are no electric fences in Africa. Uh, so uh-huh. people just, just roamed around 
and essentially these these new tribal names that we have are new inventions uh, if you go further back in african history some of these names don't even exist for example the yoruba the name yoruba doesn't come from the yoruba people hmm. it comes from the hausa people and it was actually a derogatory phrase in which they were calling people from this area but a lot of nigerians don't know that mm -hmm. it's the same thing with uh the jola people the jola people in senegambia that's not their original name they have a name called eshulalu but a lot of people do not know that name because unfortunately with the the uh colonialism and the interjecting of foreign religions some of our history is not at the forefront to where it would have been if we would have been left to our own devices so since you spend more time learning about jesus or allah you don't get to learn about the native uh history of your land and it's not even taught in schools so uh, some africans depending on the area grow up and they don't know uh these original names or, or their original history and then uh you know somebody like me comes around and they're like well how do you know this <laughs> 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 and uh <laughs> you know it's uh it's a conversation from there mm -hmm. So do you, um, are you, you, you prescribe to Pan-Africanism then I would, uh, so. Yes. Okay. So do you believe that black, that the black man and black woman should be their building or should all the different continents around the globe where black people are, they fight there to get what's necessary and use Africa as the main resource with the Africans in the 54 countries building them to make it a utopia for black people to fight um, white uh, racism and um, white white supremacy. Do you believe that? My philosophy, uh, my philosophy changes based upon where you live. Okay. Uh, if you're in America, my philosophy is simple. Get out. Just like the movie. Hmm. That's my philosophy. It doesn't mean that, you know, that was going to work for everyone. But this is what I work to. I work toward repatriation. Now, it's unfeasible to say that every single person can leave and go somewhere, right? So we're going to need people to continue the struggles of our ancestors in America to, uh, you know, work towards uh, just having a life that you won't be hunted and killed and discriminated. So we need people to stay in America too. But if you can afford it, get out. Because there are a lot of opportunities, especially in the continent, that we as Africans in America can take advantage of. Your money will stretch much longer. You can develop business and commerce and relations and we can build something generationally to where two, three generations from now, some of the things that we go through in America won't be a problem for us. Okay, so for but so, oh, go, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say it's also uh, not feasible for every single person to repatriate to Africa. Some people may want to repatriate to the Caribbean. Some people may want to repatriate uh, to other places. My philosophy: if you can get to somewhere where most of the people look like you and build with them, that's a big step forward. It's a big step forward, whether it be St. Croix or St. Thomas or Jamaica or Haiti or, you know, there's a lot of opportunities in other places other than the continent that people uh, may not think about when they discuss repatriation, but, you know, find the best place for you. You know, you may have a business that is more uh, fruitful in another part of the world other than Africa. But I do recommend that everybody at least, you know, travel around and, and, and make your decision, you know, visit Africa, visit other places. Uh, just make your decision from there. Mm -hmm. But I do always encourage that if you can try to get out of this oppressive uh, 
country and situation that we are currently in with the USA, this abusive relationship that we're in with the USA. And that's just my philosophy. Okay, la last question here on this topic. Um, well, what, what do we say about the Nigerians, the Senegalese, the Cameroons that come to America, educate? They were supposed to go back to build Africa, the pan African <laughs> paradise. What do we say about that when they're here leaving, uh, living and then once American blacks built the country, but we're supposed to leave and stay or are they supposed to leave too? I don't think there's a responsibility as we're supposed to that we can uh, impose on uh, everyone. It would be great if we could keep our geniuses in country. Uh, and that and that goes for Africa and America. Uh, Africans go to places like London, America, other universities. They earn these degrees and some of them never return home. And then you have African-Americans that go study abroad and never come back to the ghetto and help. <laughs> so the situation is twofold. No matter where you go to study, no matter where you go to uh, gain your expertise, come back home and help your people. No matter even where you live, if you want to stay in America and you're a continental African, fine. But help your people too. You got to figure out that balance. You can't just run away from the problems because the problems won't never fix itself. You know, we have, we have geniuses in... Say if you live in D.C. and they go study in Japan, never come back. You have to come back and help your people. That's where the responsibility comes into play. Help your people no matter where you gain your expertise. You know, uh, for me repatriating, I'm not going back just to fit in. I'm going back to start some business, start some commerce something that'll bring something to the continent it doesn't have you know that's that should be the goal you know and i understand the argument of yes we built america uh we were very instrumental in what is now called america uh as people say on our backs that is true but we have to love ourselves and love our children and love our families enough to get out of this abusive relationship because America is not going to change. It's just not. We've tried to appeal to morality. We've tried to appeal to simple human rights, civil rights, economic rights. We've tried everything. The only thing we haven't tried is leaving. Yeah. And that's just, I mean, that's just what it is. And if we're, we're great enough to where we provided them the means to build this empire. So that means we're great enough to build it again in Africa so was, or somewhere else, wherever so, you want to go. So it's slavery in America, but it's colonization over in Africa and the Africans seem not to be able to control their own countries, especially with the Chinese. <laughs> In, in, uh, uh, influxing in. So how do, how do they handle that before we stake our claim in that land, a land that we weren't born in? How do they, uh, does it take them to fix that problem before we would say, okay, we're going to pull up roots from the place that we know that we built and we that and they can't control actual countries that they were actually born in, their land. Well, let's dissect the problem. You mentioned the Chinese. The reason why the Chinese is in Africa is for handouts. Why are Africans taking handouts from Chinese? Because part of the problem is what we discussed earlier. We don't go back. Their people don't go back. So if you don't invest in Africa and they have problems and they don't have the capital to cover it, somebody somewhere is going to see a business opportunity. 
this is an opportunity for us to build a bridge. And I'm talking about the people that necessarily don't want to go back to Africa. You can still build that bridge by investing in Africa because Africa is just trying to solve problems. They not, they're not looking at where the money is coming from. So if it's us that invest in Africa, if it's us that build up things in Africa, if it's us that, you know, build these commerce deals and everything like that, there's no need for a Chinese. There's no need for a Japanese. There's no need for any of these other foreign groups that come into Africa with their big sacks of money because Africans are getting tired of Chinese. <laughs> Africans are getting tired of all these because they don't get, they don't get treated right. You know, they're learning what we learned a millennia ago. <laughs> you know, we already knew that they're getting that taste of that medicine in some countries now. Like, man, guys came over here they said they was going to do this and now they're treating us all funky it's time for these dudes to get out of here so being that we've already learned that lesson we can provide so much wisdom to africa listen we understand that you guys may not have the population that remembers what happened here but we do we remember and if you would allow us you know, in your parliaments and, 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 and caucus and whatever you have and uh, help you with this problem, both of it can be beneficial to both of us. Because one thing about these oppressive people, they're not going to change. They're going to do the same things over and over and over. It's up to us globally to change what we're doing. And if we don't change globally what we're doing, we're going to be in the same conversation 30, 40, 50, maybe 100 years from now. But we have to have dedicated people on both sides of the coin that's willing to come to that conversation and say, well, what can I do here? And then people in the continent say, well, what can I do to help y'all there? We got to build these bridges. It's not going to be an overnight solution, but that's the best solution that I can come up with. Hey, like Sean said in the in the in the in the chat, uh, he said spears are flying. You right, King. Spears are flying, <laughs> and I see Miss Moon over there. She, Miss Moon, I think Miss Moon won. And and and, uh, and Crazy D. All right, I, I'll split that uh that uh four dollars uh cash app that came in because you just got it in with that brother. But Crazy D, back to you. I want to. I don't want to promote because certainly because you you interviewing me, and 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 again, you know I'm I'm used to interviewing people. I've interv I've been I've interviewed people for for thirty years, and uh, so you know I I think it'd be fun to be on the other side of it this time. So and, and I, I couldn't think of too many other people uh, that I would appreciate being interviewed. By, and I, I would be remiss uh, not to mention that I'm also have an interview coming up that I'm being interviewed by pretty much the dean of old school hip hop interviewers, my brother Jay Kwan. Uh, so Jay Kwan, and Jay Kwan don't even talk to you unless you know if you after 1986, he don't even he don't even interview. You know? mm -hmm. This brother has interviewed everybody. I'm talking about the, the pioneers, cats that. That, 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 that were in hip hop before records, you know, I don't even go get into mentioning all those people, but, uh, but yeah, I look forward on the seventh. Now, now give me a little insight. What we, what we talking about, King? What, what, what we doing? We're going from when you were a little baby. I know you, when you were born, <laughs> you already had that state of mind. I was, you know, I was born on the Clare. I was born on St. Clair. And you weren't, and you weren't blind to mankind. Okay, drop the Melly Mel bars. Child <laughs> is born with no state of mind, blind to the ways of mankind. Except for it was the opposite, the reverse, right? That's right. Or all the way up to today, in between Halle Berry, all those different uh, things, uh, Lawrence Fishburne, all those different interviews. Oh, I do my research. So I see. In depth, and it's going to be something that I believe will honor you the way that you should be honored 
it's funny because I thought, you know, that somebody will pop up and ask me some Halle Berry questions. So I was surprised that I didn't, I didn't, well, you know what? I can't take that back because Zoom did bring up uh, HB, but uh, it, it was, it was in, you know, a different context that I had interviewed her. But anyway, we, we, we you know, for sure, I'll, I'll save all of that, that HB information for the interview. Yes, but, sir. Uh, Kevin. And you done brought Fishburne and okay, you done did some research, man. I do my research. Uh, but June 7th, the Film Review, Life Channel, YouTube, subscribe, subscribe now. June 7th, the first big MC from CLE, and it is uh, MC Chill. We have them. It's an honor. The Film Review, TFR Podcast Live, hashtag TFR Podcast Live. You put that in Google and everything comes up. Apple Podcasts, all the different podcasts that we're on, 19 plus, global. You're going to be seen, heard, recognized, and appreciated. That's what we do because we need our people seen, heard, recognized, and appreciated. And that's what I've always done. And that's what we do over here at lordlandfilms.com. Okay, and for all, all the people on all the Chill Talk platforms, we will for sure have all that information up. Uh, he has flyers already up. We'll be posting that. So all the people in the, in the, in the Chillosphere will have all, all of that information um, on all my platforms and, and my associated platforms and, and people who just rock with me. But uh, yeah, so that was cool. But real quick, real quick, D, man, that was you. To, to see you in, in Panther building like that, that was that was powerful, man. And that brother, that's why I had to move to get that brother in there. Because uh, he, he's a serious cat, man, with lots lots of information. I, you know, I, I, I watch him build all the time. So it was good that, that he was able to, and, and Sean too. But it was good to be able to get that brother in here and, and, and see him do his thing. It's a, it's a dichotomy, though, because on one end, they say that we should leave, but then the Nigerians and the Senegalese and all the different other people are migrating over. It's as if the United States gets what they want. We were watching this movie, my wife and I, called The uh, Confessions of a Nazi Spy. It came out in 1939. Mm. Edward G. Robertson. It was oh, the dang. First, it was the first anti-Nazi film that was produced in the United States starring most of uh, 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 German actors who had defected because the Nazi party came into power. Okay. But, but what it shows you is that black people have been, they, they don't show any black people in this story. This is a story between Germans and white Americans and they show nothing, no, no blacks at all. But the main point, when you know what's going on, when you go back into history, you know that Black people were fighting and unions were created to keep black people out of the um, uh, union jobs. Or right. Well, that's why unions were formed in the first place and then, for brothers moving from the south up to the north. But go ahead. And you realize that they would rather have German immigrants come in who were some not, who could be Nazi sympathizers and have to fight to keep them from trying to take over the United States than to give black people their place. So when you hear parties talk about immigrants and they're not talking about black people who should be having those jobs, then it becomes an issue to the whole. It's it's a it's a it's a it's an issue that we have to discuss and work out and say when are we going to talk and deal with dealing with candidates that are about what black people want right country and what black people need in this country right and and i think i think we have i hope that we have realized that cuz a long time man we were at a point where we felt as a people uh as an unconnected collective that our our votes didn't matter uh we we see that that is not we obviously turned the election the last time by not showing up and uh you know but now we 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 we, we candidates know or at least they're starting to know 
that they need to talk to us. But when they talk to us, we got to know what to say back to them. We got to we got to let them know what we want. We need to let them know, you know, that we're not as bad as we probably want this president out. We 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 can't just give our blindly give our allegiance again and again and again uh, to a party. Did you hear the interview? Did which, you did you watch the interview? Which which interview are you talking about? The the Breakfast Club and Biden this morning. No, was that was everybody there? Was was Charlemagne? Was was it was just Charlemagne? Charlemagne laid it out so beautiful that he would be there. It was it's just him and Biden. Okay. And Biden, he asked Biden what, you know, the quid pro quo, what are you going to give? And Biden goes on and starts talking about, I've been, I've been uh, endorsed by the NAACP every time I ran. Uh, we did this. Uh, I was in the only state that had National Guards when Martin Luther King was killed. And he was very condescending to Charlemagne, but he just kept talking. He denied. Mm -hmm laws he denied the three strikes uh he threw the congressional black caucus in which was true they did uh they did go along with it but certain things that they didn't get that clinton had promised uh but so he's not taking responsibility for what he's done and what do you think about it children people want to vote because they're afraid of trump they're afraid. They're not asking right. Biden. Biden is saying, just just get him out of there. And here, let's switch one one Confederate for another Confederate. And right. you know, everything will be fine. What do you think about that? That we're gonna vote out of fear instead of voting by him offering us something, reparations, something like that. Uh I, I think we should never vote out of fear, first of all. Uh I, we still have to demand uh, a seat at the table. We still have to demand. I mean, we just we can't give our allegiance away again as we have time and time and time again. Because truthfully, as bad as this dude is, we as as people as as a collective group of people, we still need as 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 my brother Daryl was saying, we need to to step in uh, and act as a unit to better ourselves, regardless who who is the president. Because as bad as, as it is right now, as crazy as, as, as 45 is, we'd be in a better place if we, we acted accordingly to all kinds of values, to, to, to uh, what, what is the Nguza Saba principle? The uh, cooperative economics for for so many of those principles, we wouldn't have to deal with a lot of these fears. We wouldn't be fearful of a lot of these fears. So again, in in dealing with Biden, I mean, how bad do you want to be president, bro? Like as bad as we don't want this other dude to be president, how bad do you want to be president? Because it was it was kind of like that with Hillary. How bad do you really want to be president? Because you don't, if you don't really want to be president, then we really won't show up and vote. So hopefully he learned a lesson. And if it, it, maybe it appears that he hasn't, but. But when you watch the interview. I'm going to watch the interview. You, you have to watch the interview. I mean, Hillary basically had a Spanish conquistador <laughs> for her running mate in Tim <laughs> So, I mean. <laughs> Spanish is Spain and he came over they the ones who uh, brought the germ and killed <laughs> and made the Mexican <laughs> and, uh, so uh, what do you think about that chill uh, what we were talking about with uh, brother uh, Black Panther when he was talking about uh, going over there and building with the African but where uh, sister soldier says black man where is your army on Buck Wilder Right. Mm -hmm. Black man. And I would say black man and black woman. Where is your army? Where's the army? Where's the mechanized uh, uh, military force that will keep our our ventures, our economic ventures and our social ventures protected 
from being overrun like what the, the like the Chinese, for instance, if right. they keep up with their bargain, the Chinese are just going to send over their armies and the Africans in those particular countries aren't going to be able to do anything with it. They own, they basically own Ethiopia and they own uh, Nigeria. Well, I, and I, I think what, what brother, and I'm not, I'm not even going to pretend to speak for no, the Panther. Opinion. Right. But what I'm saying is, I, I'm saying the part of this key is coalition building. You're talking about an army? Man, we're so far away from, from having something like that. Dude, we, we, are, we are an army against each other right now. But uh, what protects, what protects, take the, let's take the black hand that came over that was really, that's why the mafia was started to kill off the black hand that came from Cecilia that was uh, messing with the different Italians that came over to the United States. That it has to be a army, a police force to be able to protect your economic base or you're gonna be destroyed and foiled all the time. Right. What I'm saying is, we we are so divided. We are so far from from building an army to protect us. We again, what I'm saying is, we 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 can't even protect ourselves from ourselves right now. We are so divided. We're we, we're mentally colonized, not just here, but over there as well. But what part of what he was saying is. We got to come back because, you know, here in the States, we are we are so disenfranchised from Africa. We are not connected with Africa. And in some parts, in a lot of parts of Africa, they are disconnected from us. But those those connections, those people that, that go there, that come back, to do business back and forth. And once we see that we can make we can make money together, because that's what's gonna make the army happen. Once we realize that we can actually make money together, that's gonna be some of the motivation to for us to to form a collective. Because right now we're we're mentally we're mentally separated. Our army is physical. We're mentally separated, but we can talk about that some more. I see Miss Moon over there uh, uh, nodding her head, and I'm and I'm and big ups to Miss Moon. She's been hanging in here the entire time, so big ups to that. And my, and what'd you say, Miss Moon? I was gonna say I had to hold it down for the ladies. Hey, you definitely <laughs> held it down. And and my brother Daryl Sullins, he 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 he, you know, he go hang out with me just in case it's a problem. <laughs> in cases I, I need some help. Hey, Chill. What, one thing I want to say is about that in, in talking about economic supremacy um, is just a mindset. I know when, you know, I, we had our folks fighting over chicken sandwiches, crazy stuff like that. Yeah. Um, with them talking about these different drugs, they're trying to come up with vaccines. I listened to that and I went and I researched who manufactured it and I bought the stock. It doesn't take much to do that, do some research and start investing in things like that. But see, that's, that's what I'm saying, Daryl, that that's, that's that monetary. Cause when you, when you start making money and you realize you can make money together, then, then, cause like I just said, like I was telling crazy D, you know, we, 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 we are so far away from, physical a physical connection and we definitely need it we can't we we're unprotected you know it's nothing that we can do right now being separated the way that we are but that's a mental separation man the, the entire the richness of 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 the african continent as a collective and they still have to deal with their own colonization but the mental colonization that we have here in America towards each other and towards Africa, man, we, we got work to do on, we got work to do on that. But, you know, we, we can get into that some more, but Daryl, I think you are trying to make a bigger point. Go ahead, bro. I'm just saying that uh, that's one thing we, we so become, our mindset has become dependent. Somebody give us something. We looking for Santa Claus all the time. And if you look at the, the, the amount of money that's in our community, that goes out and not come back in. 
that's the issue that we have to deal with. Right. And that's what I'm saying. That has nothing to do with 45. That has zero to do with 45. Nothing. Nothing to do with that. So we shouldn't vote out of fear. Oh, if we don't vote for this guy who might not do anything for us, then we got to deal with, with 45. But what's the crazy thing about it? We have people who sit at the table that look like us that's not really doing anything for that, that's buying in. As long as they deliver votes, they have a seat at the table. And and we should recognize that um, they have to be accountable, too. And we got to hold them accountable. That's another thing. We, we, we give away our allegiance. We give away our sponsorship. I mean, we're, we're in, I mean, we know we're not in a democracy. We're in a Republic. So we give our power to those people to represent us. And, and lots of times they don't, they just go and they fall into the system. They become part of the system. Like, like my man, uh, uh, Ern and East Cleveland say, they start going to these dinners and eating, 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 eating uh, chicken. Uh, Ernest said he ain't eating no chicken dinners, but, uh, they end up in at, at the chicken dinners. But you know we gotta we gotta hold each other responsible and 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 D crazy D that because Daryl's also is D uh, that's something that I learned a long time ago working for a black newspaper oh it's easy to beat down the, the white people who who are being racist and 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 bigots and colonizers and oppressors oh that's easy to do as a as a black journalist the hard part is holding ourselves accountable, our leaders, our politicians, our business owners, for black people to hold ourselves accountable. That's the hard part. But once once we get once we we cross that hurdle and everybody understands, we're not gonna keep letting you represent us if if you're not if you're only representing yourself yourself. Then in, until we understand that we're going to continue to have a problem. So we, we can't give away our allegiance to our own people. We damn sure can't give our way our allegiance to a politician, even out of the fear of, of, of the devil that we know. We can't do it because it, if we were doing what we were supposed to do, like Daryl said, it, it, it wouldn't be affecting us the way that we think that it is. But again, and I, and I need to really go see this because I need to go see what you need to see. And, uh, you know Joe, what I thought, Chill? Joe Biden you is know, talking about. You know what I thought, Chill? I thought that after Bernie tried to run the first time, we were precinct captains out here with Bernie Sanders. But then when he, I'm talking about the first time. Okay. Precinct captains. We went in and learned the whole system about the the primary. I mean, uh, I forget what they call them out here. Primary. I'm just going to call it primary. But um, caucuses. It's caucus right, right, out caucus, here. Caucus, right. Um, the second time I thought that he was going to put Nina Turner up. I really, I really thought that because she was a writer for him, her message is inspirational. I interviewed her years ago and her message was inspirational. Then, uh, it's still inspirational. Now I thought that they, he would put her up, but the Democrat party doesn't want to have anything to do with Nina Turner. And she's the most example of strength and negritude as well as positivity that's a negritude is not a bad word for people who don't know what it right, means right right black strength but uh so she's a a person that represents her her look who she is how she stands how she speaks it's black negritude positivity and i thought that they would put her up but the she spoke and said that they don't want to have anything to do with her because she's a truth teller. Well, and I'm gonna I'm tell you this, D. And you know, Nina, that's that's my girl. That's a, that's a Lee Harvard. That's a Lee Harvard queen right there. And uh, Nina Nina was was my uh, was my council person. Um, and I I knew Nina and her sister, you know, as you know, long long before that. But don't think that you've seen the end of Nina Turner. Because Bernie, for Bernie to, 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 to give up his support this early, deals had to be made. 
So I don't think we've seen it. And it's not that I've talked to Nina and I've gotten this information, mm -hmm. but. I can only go by what she said on the radio and what she said when she talked to the Breakfast Club. Concessions have been made by okay. Joe Biden for Bernie because, you know, Bernie's people aren't easily transferable. You know, just because you're the next up, that don't mean Bernie's people going with you, <laughs> you know, and because that's what happened to Hillary. Mm -hmm. They hated Bernie's people hated Hillary and but Bernie wasn't too excited about transferring. I mean, he did what he had to do. Bernie talking about, about immigrants. Also, he mm -hmm. speaks very little about black issues, but he was speaking about immigrants, the illegal. I mean, the Democrats have gone so far to the left to uh, speak not only about immigrants, but illegal immigrants, paying illegal, illegal immigrants, bringing them into the country, getting them their uh, EIN number and so they can get driver's license and get houses and then mm -hmm. be able to be employed. I mean, they've gone that far. And what about the black, what about the 98% women and 81% men, black men that vote for you? Right. Well. We we had some candidates that were I mean we're not, not saying we there were some candidates out there that were that were actually believe it or not Nash on a national platform was talking about reparations. I was I was I mean it wasn't the ones that are left, it wasn't Joe Biden, it wasn't Bernie, but there were there were candidates that actually spoke those words and with knowledge of the process. Of of the of the HR uh uh forty. HR forty, yeah. Yeah, HR forty. I was I was shocked by that. That one Asian brother uh was 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 dropping that information too. But all all my only point is is I don't think we've seen the end of of Nina because nobody rolled for Bernie like Nina did. And just because he didn't get the the nomination don't believe that he he gave up that support uh pulled out because you know bernie capable of going all the way to the end and and causing a commotion at the at at the uh at the caucus at at the end of the day so i think we're gonna see our homegirl again and there's also you know what we'll i'll talk about some that some more because i know some people that have that have talked on the one uh on a coalition uh, uh about nina and other things in case you know what let me let me stop right there we'll talk right there we'll talk let me let me start right there i look uh, let me just say i look forward to it okay all right all right because i do have some 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 inside information uh from camp camp nina <laughs> but uh hey I think we ran this one dry. We we got it in for the for the first uh what did I call it? Talk talk to me about whatever. Talk to me about whatever. We 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 ran the gamut. We did the whole whole chillography. We we went we did hip hop, we did martial arts, we did some politics, we did some intellectualism, we did journalism, we we got it. We was on talking about some freestyle and uh karate maneuvers and we got sean and 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 brother ben up in here we had we had part of the mossy clan in here so uh and got some old school mcs in the building it was a good build and 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 miss moon <laughs> miss moon hung out the entire time that's how that's how she was on me crazy d when she showed up at the show demanding to be a, a co-host, I didn't even know who the hell she was. And I told her to watch the show. And she was like, what am I going to do that for? What am I going gonna, I'm gonna to sit here and watch the show from here, from the show? I was like, oh, what, what? Next thing I know, Ms. Moon was sitting next to me when the airtime, when the, when the show started. And I said, talk to me, Cleveland. She was sitting right next to me. I don't know how she pulled that one off. Hey, determination. Tenacity. Tenacity, tenacity. It took a while, chill, but we're doing Star Trek. Remember when Star Trek and uh, uh, 
what was the other one? Uh, uh, Space 1999? Yeah, yeah. When the communicators, and now we're doing oh, it. Yeah, yeah. Each other yeah. visually talking. You know, so, yeah. I mean, we're in the 21st century for real. Yeah, yeah, it, there we go. All right, Miss Moon, you got anything to say before we before we shut this down? Since you 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 hung out there, did you learn some things? Did you hear absolutely. some good stuff? I know you got your information in there, but talk to me, Queen. Yeah, absolutely. This was awesome. Um, a little earlier, to, like after I had to jump off for a second, I was in and out, um, off and on. But this was really, really good. I, I don't I don't think I was expecting all of this with the, with the legends on here. I mean, this was like, whew, it was an earful. Great now, I'm sorry if my background's loud. Um, we got somebody watching TV. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I appreciate just being a part of it, man. And um, we, we got to get together real soon. And I, I definitely look forward to another platform such as this real soon. So make okay. sure you inbox me and let me know again when something like this is happening. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's, 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 it's go time. So yeah, Miss Moon, uh, M S M O O N E, Instagram, Miss Moon motivate, Miss Moon dot motivates, and uh, Miss Moon. But if you put in Miss Moon, I'm I'm bound to come up. Facebook Moon, Miss Moon, Super Moon. Shout out to Crazy D, man. It's been years since I seen him. Oh my God. He, uh, yeah, yeah. He absolutely provided a platform when I was pursuing my music career as a vocalist slash rapper. Um, you got bars, Miss Moon. Ah, uh, stop it! No, 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 no. Ladies of the land, um, Chevy Blue, and we was doing our thing, man. And crazy okay, D, you was rocking yeah. with Chevy Blue. Yeah, Crazy D was there for us, man. He he gave he he gave us a platform. Appreciate that. That's what that brother does. A good brother. Yes, 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 yes. When I saw him come in, I was like, "Is that the real Crazy D?" <laughs> yes, the so, real one, not some yes. old fake bootleg one. Yes. Yeah, so...